In order to maintain peace, it has been explained at the outset that the foremost requirement of is justice. And despite abiding by the principle of justice, if efforts to make peace are unsuccessful, then unite and fight collectively against the party that has transgressed and continue till such a time that the transgressing party is ready to make peace. Once the transgressing party is ready to make peace, the requirement of justice is do not seek revenge, do not impose restrictions or embargoes. By all means, keep an eye on the transgressor, but at the same time, try and improve his situation. In order to end the unrest prevalent in some countries of the world today, and unfortunately, some Muslim countries are prominent amongst them, it should be analyzed in particular by those nations that have the power to veto, to determine whether or not justice has been properly dispensed. Whenever help is needed, the hands are stretched towards the powerful nations. As I stated before, we bear testimony to the fact that the history of the British government has always upheld justice. And this has encouraged me to draw your attention to some of these matters. Another principle that we have been taught for restoring peace in the world is not to eye covetously the wealth of others, the Holy Quran says, and strain not the eyes after what we have bestowed on some classes of them to enjoy for a short time the splendor of the present world that we may try them thereby. Greed for any envy of the wealth of others is a cause of increasing restlessness in the world. On a personal basis, keeping up with Genesis, as the saying goes, has resulted in unending greed and destroyed social peace. Greedy competitions on national basis started and led to the destruction of world peace. This is proven by history and every sensible person can assess that the desire for the wealth of others causes envy and greed to grow and is the source of loss. This is why God Almighty says that one should keep an eye on one's own resources and derive benefit from them. The effort to make territorial gains is for seeking the benefit of that territory's natural resources. The grouping of nations and the making of power blocks are to procure the natural resources of some countries. In this regard, a number of authors who had previously worked as advisor to the governments have written books detailing how some of the countries endeavor to get control of the resources of other nations. How far the writers are truthful is best known to them, and God knows best. But the situation that emerges from reading these accounts causes serious anguish in the hearts of those who are loyal to their poor countries, and a major reason for the growth in terrorism and the race for weapons of mass destruction. Nowadays, the world considers itself more sober, conscious, and educated than in the, in the past. Even in the poor countries, there are such intelligent souls who have greatly excelled in education in their respective fields. Highly intellectual minds work together in large research centers of the world. Under such circumstances, one should have imagined that people would have joined together and tried jointly to end the wrong ways of thinking and the follies of the past that had resulted in animosities and had led to horrific wars. The God-given intellect and scientific progress should have been used for the betterment of humanity and for devising permissible methods of deriving benefits from one another's resources.
God has bestowed each and every country with natural resources that should have been fully utilized to turn the world into a heaven of peace. God has gifted many countries with an excellent climate and environment for growing different crops. Had proper planning been adopted to use modern technology for agriculture, the economy would have strengthened and hunger could have been eliminated from the earth. Those countries that have been endowed with mineral resources should be allowed to develop and trade at fair prices and openly. And one country should benefit from the resources of the other country. So this would be the right way, the way that is preferred by God Almighty. God Almighty sends his messengers to the people so that they can show them the ways that bring people closer to God. At the same time, God says that there is complete freedom in matters of faith. According to our beliefs, reward and punishment will be after death as well. But under the system that God has set up, when the cruelty is inflicted on his, on his creation and justice and fair play are ignored, then by the laws of nature, the after effects can be seen in this world as well. Severe reactions to such, such in, in, uh, injustice are observed and there can be no guarantee about the reaction being right or wrong. The true way to conquer the world is that every effort should be made to give the power, uh, the, the, the poorer nations, their due uh, status. A major issue today is the economic crisis of what has been termed as the credit crunch. Strange as it may sound, the evidence points towards one fact. The Holy Quran guides us by saying, Avoid interest, because interest is such a curse that it is a danger for domestic, national, and international peace. We have been warned that he who accepts interest will one day be as one whom Satan has smitten with insanity. So we Muslims have been warned that in order to avoid such a situation, stop dealing in interest because money that you get for interest does not enhance your wealth, although on the face of it may seem to you that it is increasing. Inevitably, a time comes when it is, its true effects emerge. Furthermore, we have been cautioned that we are not allowed to enter into the business of interest with the warning that if you do so, it will be a war against God. This factor is obvious from today's credit crunch. In the beginning, there were individuals who borrowed money to buy property. But before they could see ownership of the property, they used to die burdened with the debt. But now, there are governments that are burdened with debt and smitten as if <coughs> with insanity. <coughs> Large companies have be become bankrupt some banks and financial institutions have folded or been bailed out at this uh, out and this situation prevails in every country regardless of its being rich or poor <clears throat> you know better than i do about this crisis the money of the depositors has been wiped off now it depends upon governments as to how and to what extent to protect them but for the time being, the peace of mind of the families, businessmen, and leaders of the governments is in most countries of the world has all but been destroyed. Does this situation not compel us to think that the world is heading to the logical conclusion whose warning was given to us well in advance? God knows better what the further consequences of this situation will be. God Almighty has said, come towards peace and 
that can only be guaranteed when there is pure and wholesome trade and when resources are put into usage in a proper and fair manner. Now I end these brief points of our teaching with the reminder that the true peace of the world lies only in turning towards God. May God enable the world to understand this point and only then will they be able to discharge the rights of others. Finally, I am grateful to you all again for coming here and listening to me. Thank you very much.